Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to God's house. Welcome to Fount of Life, especially those of you visiting us this morning. It's great to have you with us. We pray God will bless your worship as you hear his word and sing his praise with us today. This morning we're going to be starting a new kind of series of focus on our worship, a series of themes with our our worship services, keying off of things Jesus spoke in the Gospels, the Gospel according to St. Luke, as we will hear them over the next several weeks. What Jesus is going to be speaking to us about is faith. We're going to hear the disciples this morning say to Jesus, increase our faith. And who wouldn't want more faith, stronger faith, greater faith? Faith is powerful. We're going to hear Jesus tell us in the gospel today that faith can do some amazing things, but we will also be reminded that the power of Christian faith does not lie in the one who has that faith, but the one in whom we have faith. That is our powerful, our powerful, excuse me, our all-powerful Lord Jesus Christ. Faith leads us to do amazing things. It leads us to give generously to the work of the Lord. It leads us to love each other. It also leads us even to forgive those who have sinned against us. And so we pray, God, increase our faith, and he will answer that prayer today through his word and through his sacrament. God bless your worship today. Let's begin our worship service by joining in our first hymn. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our meditation this morning is the words of our Savior from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 17, the words we just heard a few minutes ago. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, the one in whom we place our faith, as small as it may be, dear friends. Achilles was the most powerful warrior in all of Greece. He was seemingly invincible. Time after time, he would go up against powerful warriors of other nations, and time after time, he would defeat them. He seemed to be absolutely invulnerable to attack. Arrows would seem to glance right off of him. Sword blows would do nothing to stop or even slow him down. So when Greece attacked Troy, the Trojans sent their powerful, their most powerful warrior they had, a man by the name of Hector. And as expected, the two powerful warriors went head to head and Hector was slain. Achilles came out on top. The people of Troy were, were, were perplexed and, and, and they were without any hope, so it seemed. I mean, how could you go against somebody like Achilles? How would they ever possibly withstand that powerful and invincible warrior until they learned a little tidbit of information about Achilles? You see, although it seemed like Achilles was completely invulnerable, invincible, nothing could faze him, they learned otherwise. There was one part of Achilles' body that was not invulnerable. And even if you don't know the story of Achilles, I'll bet you can guess what part of the body that was, right? His heel. You see, it, 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 it turns out that Achilles' mother, uh, in attempts to try to make her, her baby boy an invincible warrior that could never be harmed, dipped him into the river Styx. But of course, you couldn't just drop him in there because he would float away and drown. She had to hold on to him. So the part of his body she held on to was, of course, the heel as she dipped him in there. And so they learned it was Achilles' heel that was the vulnerable part of this powerful warrior. So Hector's brother, Paris, went out to battle against Achilles. But this time he knew what to do. He 
drew his arrow, carefully aimed it at Achilles' heel, let go, and sure enough, the powerful warrior Achilles was brought down. He was powerful, but he, as it turned out, was also vulnerable. Now, of course, the story of Achilles and his famously vulnerable heel is fiction. It's Greek mythology. But it is, I think, a very accurate description of the Christian faith. Our faith as Christians, like, kind of like the warrior Achilles, is powerful, and yet it is also vulnerable. Jesus says, Faith in him can do amazing, powerful things, but he also, in the beginning of our gospel this morning, tells us about how vulnerable it is and how we need to protect it from attack and what a curse he pronounces on those who would lead people to sin and so wound their faith. So this morning, let, let's, let's listen again. Let's do a little dig, deeper dig into what Jesus says to us. And let's find out what it is that makes a Christian faith so powerful and yet how is it also at the same time vulnerable? Jesus says something I think we must all find a little bit startling this morning in our gospel. Something that's like, really? Do you mean that? When he said that through faith you could tell a tree, a mulberry tree in this case, to be uprooted and plant itself in the sea just by you saying so. <laughs> now that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? It, it would make uh, landscaping a whole lot easier. <laughs> but I'll have to admit to you, I've never gotten a tree to do that. I have never gotten a tree by me telling it to be uprooted and planted in the sea. It's never done that. I'll also have to be honest with you, I've never tried. <laughs> I've never said that to a tree, mulberry or otherwise. Some people have, who are skeptics of the Bible and who don't believe Jesus and are trying to go out to, to make Christians look foolish and the Bible look stupid and Jesus to be fake have said, obviously that can't happen and yet Jesus said it would, so why would you believe him? He's wrong. But here's the thing. I don't believe at any point in history, certainly not to me or to you, has Jesus ever commanded us to uproot trees with our words. But he has commanded us to do something else. Something that I believe requires a whole lot more power and strength. And that is to forgive those who sin against us. To forgive others. That's hard. It's harder than uprooting a tree because our natural tendency when somebody hurts us, somebody sins against us, is to hold a grudge, to seek revenge against them, to forgive. That's hard. That takes a lot of strength, more strength than uprooting a tree and planting it in the sea. But faith Faith in Jesus can do that. If Jesus would ever command you to uproot a tree and plant it in the sea and you would obey his command by faith in him, it would happen, I guarantee it, because Jesus says so. But since he hasn't done that, we can guarantee this. Faith in Jesus by a believing child of God can indeed forgive those who have sinned against us. We can do that by faith in the one who has forgiven us. Faith, even a small faith, and you can just hear it in the disciples' words when Jesus said, forgive those who sin against you. Even if they sin against you multiple times every single day, forgive them when they come back to you in repentance. And they realize, wow, that takes a lot of faith. I don't think I have enough faith. Lord, increase our faith, they said. But Christian faith can do even other powerful things. For instance, faith in Jesus has the power to see things that others can't see. Like, we can see the grace of God and his love and mercy even in the midst of tragedy and hardship. 
We can see the home He's prepared for us in heaven, even though we've never been there. Faith, even a little faith, has the power to, to hang on, to hang, to hold on to, to Jesus' promises. His promise that we are forgiven completely, forever, no matter what we've done, that our sins are in our past and they will stay there, that we have a Savior who loves us no matter what and is with us always. Faith can do that. But I think that the question becomes, how does faith have that kind of power? I think the disciples, by asking Jesus that question or that, making that, that request of him, rather, saying, Lord, increase our faith, and they recognize, wow, I don't think I have enough faith. I don't think my faith is big enough or, or strong enough or good enough to forgive like that, Jesus. I think that revealed something, a misconception that they had and a lot of other people have as well when it comes to faith, faith in Jesus. They were focusing on themselves, not Jesus. They said, I don't think my faith, I don't think what I have inside of me is, is, is strong enough to do that. But you see, the power of faith, Christian faith, lies not in the one who possesses the faith, but in the one in whom we have our faith. Our faith can be puny, and I'm afraid probably for many of us it is pretty puny. Jesus talked about as tiny as a little mustard seed. But he said, look at the powerful, amazing things it can do. Not because of the size or the strength of that faith, but because of the size and the strength of the one in whom we have faith. Think of it this way. Little preschool girl walking across a busy street but holding on to her dad's hand is confident. She knows she's safe. Why? Because she's so powerful and big Nope, because she's holding on to the hand and he's holding on to her hand of her big and powerful dad. In the same way, faith, even a weak and trembling faith in Jesus has power because Jesus has all power. But nevertheless, don't you want a stronger faith? I don't know about you, but I don't want to hold on with a weak and trembling hand. And so we join with the disciples in that prayer, Lord, increase our faith. And he answers that prayer. But please understand how our Lord answers our prayer for a more powerful, a bigger faith. Don't sit there waiting. Pray for bigger and stronger faith and then just wait for Jesus to somehow just kind of zap a stronger faith into your heart. That's not how he does it. Here's how he promises to do it. Through his word, through his sacraments. That's how our faith increases. Pray for an increased faith. Pray for a bigger and stronger faith in Jesus. By all means, make that your daily prayer. But then make use of the ways Jesus answers that prayer through his Holy Spirit. Read the Bible every day. Come to God's house every week and hear it. Study it together with your brothers and sisters. Receive Christ's body and blood frequently in the sacrament and know that your Lord will indeed answer that prayer and increase your faith. Also, another, I think, misconception we might have about faith and the powerful things it can do is this. I think some might think, faith is something I do for God and he rewards it by answering my prayers. So the greater and bigger my faith is, the more stuff he's going to give me. And that's not how it works. Faith is just grabbing hold of what Jesus gives to us. It's not something we do to be rewarded by him. And let's also understand faith itself is not something we can do. It's a gift from God. That, that was kind of the point of that, that parable that Jesus told at the end of the gospel, the one about the, the servants who, who were merely doing their duty, doing their job that they were hired to do, not deserving some special extra reward for simply doing their job. In the same way, faith in Christ isn't something we do to get some special reward from, from God. It's just doing what is our duty. But it is God who then gives to us what he promises to give to us through faith in him. 
yeah, we could move mountains and have trees be uprooted if Jesus so chose to command us to do that. But through faith in him, we can do what he does command. We can forgive one another even as we are forgiven. Faith is that powerful, even a little faith. Kind of like Achilles. Our faith may be powerful because our faith is in the all-powerful God, but our faith is also vulnerable. And that's why Jesus began the words of our gospel this morning with a warning against anyone who would attack a vulnerable faith. He says it would be better for such a person to have a, a heavy millstone hung around their neck and thrown into the sea than to attack and cause to sin one of these little ones. He especially pointed out children in this case. The faith of children is amazing. Any of us who are parents can tell you how amazing a child's faith can be. I mean, you, you tell a child, Jesus loves you always, no matter what. They believe it. You tell a child, when we die, we go to heaven. And they believe it. It's really kind of sad that we have to grow up. And when we grow up so often, we become so skeptical because we've been burned by others who haven't kept their word. And sadly and sinfully, that sometimes leads us to be skeptical of the promises our Lord makes to us, even though he's never gone back on them. And so we might find ourselves sometimes not really trusting those promises, not like a child. Lord, give us a faith like a child and increase it to that level. But nevertheless, the faith of a child is definitely a vulnerable faith and they need to be protected. So those of us who are parents or grandparents, we need to ask ourselves, am I protecting my children's faith? Am I maybe sometimes the one who causes them to sin by my words, by my actions? What do they see and hear in me? Or by what I haven't said and what I haven't done. We need to protect our children's faith and we need to make sure we who have children or grandchildren that, that we are doing our best to be examples of faith to them to protect that amazing but vulnerable faith. But it isn't just children who have a vulnerable faith. We all do. That mustard seed sized faith can do amazing things because it trusts in a powerful God, but boy, it's a vulnerable thing. Watch your own faith. Watch and be careful about what you are being exposed to in your world. Make sure you are making, taking advantage of all of the opportunities for the Lord to increase your faith, that it be protected. As powerful as it is, it is vulnerable, but there is nothing more precious that you have than your faith. Powerful. Vulnerable. Faith is vulnerable. So vulnerable, Jesus pronounces a shocking curse on those who would attack and threaten the faith of a child or anybody else for that matter. Protect your faith. Watch out for it. Guard it carefully. Let the Lord increase it the way he promises to do it through word and sacrament. But remember, your faith is powerful. Jesus says it's powerful enough to turn a tree upside down and throw it in the sea. Christian faith, faith that is in Christ, is powerful enough to do more than that. It's powerful enough to turn upside down our lives, lives that naturally want to hold on to grudges and get back at those who have hurt us and sinned against us. But faith in Christ is so powerful, it enables us to forgive as we have been forgiven. And Christian faith is so powerful, it can turn lives upside down, not just trees, turn lives upside down, lives that were filled with despair and no hope to lives that have joy and confidence Lives that know where we're going, to heaven, with Jesus. Lord, give us such a faith 
as that. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.